Yeah, we got. I would like to call to order the City of Saugatuck City Council meeting for February thirteenth, twenty twenty three. Would you all join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would the clerk please call the roll? Baldwin? Here. Dean? Here. Gardner? Here. Leo? Here. Lewis? Mm. Muncie? Here. Stanton? Here. Uh, Council Member Lewis is absent, but on the Zoom, um, could I have a motion to excuse her absence, please? So moved. Second. Motion Baldwin, second. Leo, uh, all in favor, please say yes. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Uh, item four, Mayor's comments. Um, happy Valentine's Day to all of you. Oh, thank you. I, don't, I may not see all of you for Valentine's. Uh, <laughs> But happy Valentine's Day. So Please be my Valentine tomorrow. <laughs> uh, Ryan, over to you for Valentine's Day pleasantries. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor and, and everyone. Um, just to mention that I'm very pleased with the staff reports that are coming out of, out of City Hall and Department of Public Works. Uh, I hope you are too. Um, and this uh, item of note is that we, uh, the person with the best handwriting in City Hall, Put up the behaviors uh, that you all voted at on at your strategic planning session. So those are there for a reminder to all of us. Very nice, thank you. Uh, on agenda ch changes, um, I would like to propose one change. I would like to um, rem delete from the agenda uh, item 18B, uh, which is to go into closed session to discuss the city manager's evaluation. The reason for that is uh, I am still awaiting a uh, analysis of uh, municipal salaries from uh, Walsh Municipal Municipal Services, and I would like the council to have that that piece of work uh, for their deliberations. I'm also awaiting a few uh, evaluations from the manager that I would like uh, to see before we we do that. So uh, uh, I've spoken to the manager about it. He has no objections to waiting for two weeks uh, to to move this to our next council meeting. And uh, with that, I'll entertain a motion to uh, approve the agenda with that deletion. So moved. Motion, okay. motion Gardner, second. Baldwin, all in favor, please say yes. 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 Uh, does, does any other council member have a change to the agenda they would like to propose? Hearing none. I do not believe we have any guest speakers. That would take us to item eight. Public comment on agenda items only. Uh, I invite folks here in the room to approach the podium. Uh, please state your name and residence. See, and uh, if you could limit your comments for this period to agenda items only, and please limit your comments to three minutes. The floor is open. I don't know why I'm always the first, but I'm Jane Underwood, 130 Perryman Street. I've sat through a lot of meetings regarding planning, and uh, I was able to see a new plan for our short-term rental commission group, whatever it's going to be called, and I think a new resident and a new council member has come up with a very good plan. Thank you, Helen. I don't know uh, it doesn't seem to be on the agenda for tonight. Uh, it wasn't on the agenda for last Wednesday for the workshop. But I really think before you do anything, you should look at it, examine it. And I think it doesn't hurt to get something better. And I will leave it at that. Thank you, Helen. Thank you, Jane. Anyone else in the audience wishing to address the council? I don't see any takers. Uh, I do have a hand raised on the Zoom. Uh, Dick Waskin, uh, sir, please. I just identify yourself and uh, three minutes, please. Yes, uh, Dick Waskin, 6576 Heron Ridge Road, uh, Saugatuck, Michigan. Um, 
I wanted to just bring up the, you're going to be discussing the roads that need to be uh, paid attention to and redone this year in the city. Um, I did send a communication uh, to the city manager, which I think he may have included those comments tonight to you. Uh, I am the uh, secretary of the Heron Bay Association and as representing the association, we have been asking for probably two decades uh, for attention to be played, uh, paid to a uh, Bridge Street, which goes from the Blue Star down the hill and then eventually connecting to Heron Bay Drive. Um, the road is become very dangerous and on your very maps, they say that it's a failed road. And I would say if you prioritize your failed roads from good to worse, we would be at the bottom of that. Uh, it's uh, the, uh, the asphalt is basically deteriorated to nothing. It's very uh, stone-like, uh, dangerous to drive on because you're going right up the hill to the Blue Star. And for years, the city just never felt that this side of the Blue Star meant too much to them. Uh, but now um, you do have homes that are being built on Bridge Street that are in the city of Saugatuck. Uh, 1045 Bradley just sold for uh, just under $900,000. It's a brand new home that was built. There's another home at 1165 Bridge Street that is uh, going to be completed that I would say would, it's on the waterfront would be over a million dollars. Uh, the Harringtons have uh, lots that are platted, lots six through 15 on that street, which they plan to develop. So there will be an income stream directly to the city for taxes on Bridge Street. And we were told last year that probably this year we would have some attention paid to it. But recently we were told by Ryan that that's not no longer on, on the uh, council's um, uh, agenda to, to take a look at. So we really will plead one more time after, like I said, almost 20 some odd years that the city would please take a look at Bridge Street, the safety of Bridge Street and servicing not only the residents on Bridge Street, but where Bridge Street connects to into Heron Bay. Uh, we really would appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Waskin. Uh, I do not see any other hands raised on the Zoom. Uh, if anybody does wish to uh, provide public comment, just please uh, un unmute your, um, yourself and feel free to speak and identify yourself. I'm not seeing anyone doing that. So with that, we will close uh, our first public comment period of the evening. We will now move to uh, number nine, consent agenda. We have on the consent agenda, the regular city council meeting minutes of January 23rd, 2023. You'll find them on page four of your packet. And I will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to pass the regular city council meeting minutes proposed for January 23rd, 2023. I have a motion, Muncie. Do I have a second? Second. Second, Gardner. Uh, any discussion on the minutes? Any corrections, changes? Hearing none. This is a roll call vote. Would the clerk please call the roll? Baldwin? Yes. B? Yes. Gardner? Yes. Leo? Yes. Lewis is excused. Muncie? Yes. Stanton? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. We are now at item 10 on our agenda. Uh, staff reports, boards, commissions, and committees. Uh, under 10A, we have staff reports, which begin on page 9 of your packets. First up is the city manager. Any uh, highlights you'd like to share in your report? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just one highlight on page 10 um, under City Hall. We were able to uh, communicate with the contractor who's going to be doing the exterior repairs. Um, they've committed to starting the lead abatement for the paint in April, and they, they, um, they're they looking at a timeline for uh, two months, weather dependent, which okay. is pretty good. We wanted to get it done before the peak season. Okay, great. That's it. Happy to answer any questions on the report. Thank you, Ryan. Any questions for the manager? Hearing none, that takes us to item two. Uh, we do not have uh, Peter, the, our treasurer, here tonight. I don't believe he's on the Zoom. Uh, we'll take his report. Uh, planning and zoning, we have we have Ryan Cummins here. Uh, Ryan, any highlights, any exceptional items you'd like to uh, flag for us? 
Thank you. I don't see any questions from the council. Uh, DPW, Cody, thank you for coming tonight. Anything you want to flag for us? Any highlights, anything? Uh, Great, thank you, Cody, good report. Uh, police, we do have Captain Ensfield here. Uh, Captain, please bring, 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 the, bring the team up, yeah. So over the last uh, couple of weeks, we've had some, uh, obviously some fast retirements. I, I know I spoke, spoke to the mayor when, uh, when Ryan was gone a little bit about it, but uh, Deputy Flockster got promoted in just over the last uh, couple of weeks. Uh, so with that, we had to, you know, solicit letters and stuff, and, and Deputy Haskell is going to be taking over for uh, Deputy Flockstra. Um, I'll let him introduce himself in here in a second, but, uh, you know, we're getting him up on uh, all the training and stuff, and uh, he's going to be in the schools working the daytime. Um, where Rob was and left off and so forth. So um, another highlight of us is that uh, we got registered to go back up to the Ottawa City Schools Network, um, collaborating with them and, uh, uh, you know, getting all everybody on the same page and stuff for a lot of the school uh, things. But I'll let Nick introduce himself here real quick. And Hi, my name is uh, Nick Haskell. I've been with the Sheriff's Office for about nine years now. Uh, currently an FTO SWAT team member, less lethal instructor, firearms instructor, and uh, I'm looking forward to working with all you folks and getting to know you guys. Great. Welcome. Uh, does anybody have any questions on the agenda items or anything that's... Uh, well, I'll, I'll just start off by saying, um, you know, as, as a parent of a couple students in the Saugatuck School District, thank you so much for your service and what you do. It, it really means the world to me, so thank you. And Captain, who's the who's the other guy here? Uh, it's Connor Little Joyce. He's been here for quite a while, so <laughs> just in case the audience yeah. hadn't met him. Yeah, yet. anybody else who's meet him? Seen so. him at the basketball game. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, he's our nighttime guy. So yep. <laughs> or one of them. So yep. Well, once again, welcome, gentlemen. Thank you for joining oh, the team. Okay. No other questions or anything. So everybody's good. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, do we have Do we have John Moxie on the line for uh, for engineering report? Yes. Excellent. Mr. Moxie, how are you? Anything you'd like to share with us? Good evening. Uh, I'll pull out two, two items from my report. First, uh, that Mount Baldhead conceptual planning. Uh, Scott Herbert and I met with um, that study group um, a week ago, Friday. Uh, had a really good meeting. It was a little chilly, but we made it to the top and, and we'll be uh, getting a proposal routed through the probably the committee and staff uh, to update the conceptual planning for the Mount Baldhead area as some of these things start taking shape. Uh, the goal being to kind of have a, have a vision before we start uh, to know where we're headed. Uh, so that'll be coming uh, ultimately to, to this group uh, at some point here in the near future. Uh, the other one I wanted to highlight uh, that uh, Blue Star Highway Bridge, the navigation lighting. We are still working through the Coast Guard to try and get their input um, every time we think we're to the end, uh, we, we hit a snag, but we're getting closer on that. We still hope to have navigation lighting on the bridge before peak boating season, mm -hmm. maybe not before the first boat hits the water, but uh, that's still the goal. So we're, we're pushing through the Coast Guard process and hope to finish that up and get bids. And, and again, that'll come before you at some point too. Those are the two. I just wanted to highlight some specifics. Thanks, John. Um, John, it's Lauren Stanton. Uh, just on the Mount Baldhead conceptual planning, uh, maybe a year ago when Mr. Beckin was still a part of council, um, he thought possibly there had been some conceptual designs for Mount Baldhead in the past. Is that anything that we've dug up? I know we had talked about that. Ab absolutely. Our, our proposal as it's taking shape basically takes the work we've done. Uh, we've done conceptual planning there. I know the city had, um, I think, some pro bono conceptual planning work done by MSU, either a, 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 a work group or something like that. And then uh, new, new things that have happened since both of those. So kind of the, the net result of all of that, plus study group input and everybody else is kind of where, where that would go, I think. Great. Just wanted to make sure that those were still being looked at. Thank yeah, they, you. For sure. Yep. Thanks. Mr. Russ, Mayor, please. thanks. Um, John, thanks for being on the call tonight. Uh, more of, and, and I think something that we're going to probably need to think about when it comes to Mount Baldhead is the Mount Baldhead group has spent a tremendous amount of time up there. So I think of anybody in the city that may be more familiar with that space, it's that group. So to the extent that the Park is, Parks and Public Works Committee can consult with someone from that group in terms of this conceptual planning would be, I think, advisable. Two is, um, given the focus of that park and given the visibility of that park, 
I think the conceptual planning process, I'm not sure how far down the road that's gone, but I really think this needs to be open to the public in terms of understanding kind of the directions this might be going. Um, is it a replacement of what's there? Is it an enhancement of what's there? I think that that space deserves more public input because there's like Mr. Lafort, Neil Lafort, you may have seen his email. He, uh, Neil Lafort, I got to spend some time with before I moved to Texas, passionate about Mount Baldhead. And there's a lot of neighbors around there that really have a lot of vision for that. Um, and I think we should probably, I don't think probably, we should be including more people in that conceptual planning process as that matures. So, and that may be in the grand plans. I'm just putting that out there. Yeah, appreciate that. Um, definitely the, the uh, building restoration group is specifically mentioned in my draft proposal as is AT&T because those are kind of the two new things that have happened in the last uh, few years. Um, and we're anticipating kind of a series of different workshops, public meetings, whatever form those takes to, to gather input from, from more people than just the folks in that study group for sure, yep. Appreciate the, uh, the thoughts and we'll definitely incorporate all of that. Excellent, thank you. Great, anything else for, for John? Thank you, John. 10-7, um, we have fire, but we also in boards and commissions have the fire district administrative board. So I think, um, Dan, I think we got you for a twofer. Um, anything you'd like to share? Anything out of the ordinary? Okay, very good, sir. Thank you. Uh, Gregory, anything you'd like to share on interurban? Uh, no, our meeting is sure. next Tuesday, um, and uh, everything is very well since I last reported. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, 3B, we have uh, Cal Lake. Uh, Barry is here. Uh, anything to share, Barry? Anything out of the ordinary? Okay, sure. Just cut, yeah, come up so everyone can hear you. Thanks. Barry Johnson, City of Saugatuck, uh, one of your representatives on the Cal Lake board. Uh, we actually moved our meeting up to this week because our normal meeting would have been next week. That's uh, President's Day, so we moved that up. And uh, today we talked about, uh, yeah, not going to talk about the boiler failing at the, uh, at the site, at the uh, office. Um, the operational staffs completed the annual wastewater treatment plants clarifiers. You guys saw those when you did the tour. Um, our iron removal plant in Douglas, uh, we made reference to that when you guys visited. Uh, that work is ongoing. That uh, well number one in Douglas is offline during that uh, work. Uh, well number five, which is one of our Saugatuck wells, uh, is getting pretty old. And uh, so uh, that's gonna lead into another thing I'm gonna talk about, about our wellhead protection team. Um, Another one interesting for you city folks is that on February 7th, an emergency water service shutoff was requested at 449 Water Street due to a water service leak. So they needed to turn off their water to do the work. Well, uh, to give you a reference, that was Wicks Park Bar. And you probably know some from uh, past things that that whole street, they're all hooked in and it's at the corner of Water and Main Street. You got, when you turn off the water, you turn them off for all those properties. And so as you do your planning for infrastructure, uh, that's something we gotta think about. Uh, so we had to turn everybody off, which included a uh, hair salon there. Uh, luckily the repair went very quick. And after about a half an hour, they actually did it so the uh, salon got back in business, didn't lose any customers. Um, and then uh, we have a wellhead protection team, uh, which is a team of uh, tri-community members that are looking forward to about uh, new wells as the wells start to go out. And uh, we, for our, for our grant, uh, we have to have a, a board uh, that is has an elected official, an executive official, and a zoning official, as well as somebody from the water board, uh, the fire district, and the health department. Uh, I want to say thank you to Scott Dean for coming in and being the representative on Wellhead Protection Team as the elected official. Uh, the executive uh, at this meeting was Dan, Daniel DeFranco, who is the manager out in the township. Uh, the zoning representative was Rich Labombard, the uh, 
uh, city manager and Douglas. And of course the water board was Daryl, the fire district was Chris uh, Bernhardy, and then the county health official uh, filled out that committee. So I think Scott's uh, very astute of what's going on here. Really glad to see uh, you know your participation on that board. So um, we have a meter in the influent uh, coming into the sewer and water plant, which we are starting to measure the capacity that each community uses. And uh, we should have a report on that probably at the next meeting. So that's all I got. No, th thank you for that, Barry. And thank um, you. And thank you to Daryl and the team. I was very impressed with the forward thinking and the and the real deliberative manner in which they're going about things. So yeah. thank you. Very, very impressive. Uh, any questions for Barry? Uh, Lauren, you did you have something? No, okay. Anyone? Nope. Great. With that, um, ZBA, anything? I don't think we have anything there. Uh, I don't believe we have anybody from the historic or that would be Garn. Garn. Um, um, no. I'm shaking, Garn's shaking her head. Um, planning? We meet this Thursday. Excellent. Uh, Helen, PPW? Uh, PPW, the study groups are well underway, as our city staff is well aware. <laughs> and uh, hmm. um, we're getting a, a lot of good traction, uh, people, a lot of, lot of excitement. And our, our next meeting will be on the 28th. I encourage everyone to attend. Great. Uh, we are at nine, Tri Community Non Motorized Trail. Uh, we had a meeting, uh, coordinating with the engineer, uh, community partners, including the township and the friends. Um, we are, um, pretty much doing our due diligence. Uh, we have some shovel testing, um, and some vendors we're waiting. Um, we just received a contract from the engineer. So we're pretty much doing our housekeeping, doing our, um, you know, uh, getting everything together so that we can move forward and utilize uh, the money properly. And uh, it's going very well, I think. Great, wonderful, Holly, great news. Um, number number 10, we have Tri-Community Recycling Ad Hoc Committee. I don't think anything's going on there, Garn, Garn, you're shaking your head. Um, but since I've got you on the Zoom, I do want to flag that when we were at the Cal Lake meeting, there is a lot of interest, and I think you may have already heard from Daniel DeFranco in another household hazardous waste day. So um, you may have a new partner in the in the Cal Lake uh, crew for uh, for doing something around has waste. So I think it's yeah, an exciting, opp uh, exciting opportunity for us. Yeah, Daniel and I uh, had a phone conference today uh, talking about next steps. So stay tuned. Great, thank you. Yeah. Well, that that concludes, I believe, item ten. That takes us to eleven requests for payment. I see none on the agenda. Moving to item 12A, this is accounts payable in the amount of $616,000, $125.32. It is on page 27 of your packet and it is a roll call vote. Do I have a motion? So moved. Motion Baldwin, do I have a second? Second, second Stanton. Uh, any discussion on accounts payable? Uh, it's on page 27. I just had one question, go, Mr. Go Mayor. Yeah, go ahead. Um, and Ryan, maybe you can answer this since Peter is not here, but the um, check written out to Kirk Harrier for $10,388.11. Um, is that still payment for uh, an unused vacation time? Let me find out for you. Okay, I, I, thanks, I, Ryan. Yes. Additional uh, comments, questions on accounts payable? Seeing none, uh, this is a roll call with the clerk. Please call the roll. <clears throat> Baldwin, motion, and Stanton second. Is that correct? That yes. is correct, yeah. Thanks. Baldwin? Yes. Dean? Yes. Gardner? Yes. Leo? Yes. Lewis is excused. Muncie? Yes. Stanton? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Uh, we have no new ordinances to introduce, item 13. We have no public hearings tonight, uh, no unfinished business. And that takes us to a very robust bit of new business. Um, 16A, capital improvements, road and utility proposals. This will be a roll call vote on page 37. Mr. Mayor, uh, I believe this starts on page 32, at least mm -hmm. in my packet. Oh, okay. Very good. No worries. No worries. You ready to rock? I'm ready to go. Okay, yeah. let's do this. Yeah. 
So council, we have uh, two proposals in front of you, both related to engineering, uh, both discussed at your Wednesday workshop. Uh, I'll address them one at a time. I'll start with the street improvements. And of course we do have the benefit of having John Moxie on the call to fill in anything that I've left out. Um, I start with a description here, just for the benefit of the audience. Uh, so you know what we're talking about. Um, with, starting in with the description, talk about some of the road projects that have been done in the last two years, uh, at least since I've been here. North Park Street, a uh, very challenging project, giving, given the narrowness of that roadway. Uh, I'll always remember that project because it's the first time I've ever seen a front end loader deliver food to uh, a client. Oxbow was having an event. There was no way that they could get down the road. So they unloaded the Cisco truck at the Mount Baldhead parking lot and delivered food. So uh, very cool to contract it, but I always, always remember that. Very innovative, yeah. Uh, Campbell Road, um, also an interesting project because uh, it was a joint project with, with the city village of Douglas. And I think it was our first crack at doing some lead service line replacement. So we learned quite a bit about that. Um, a lot of interaction with the, with the residents on that project. And Butler Street, you know, that was a very small project, um, but a very sensitive project, just given the na nature of Butler Street. Uh, and I've heard it said in the city of Saugatuck that nobody wants to be on city council when Butler Street is redone. So just <laughs> remember that. Um, okay, so. We have Fleece and Vanderbrake. They 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 presented a proposal which you have in the packet uh, for the following road improvements, and we've listed them: uh, West Street from Allegan to Mason Street, East Street from Allegan Street to Mason Street, Tacken Street from Allegan to Mason, Taylor Street from Allegan to Mason Street. Um, he, we've aggregated this into to one number, which is four hundred thousand, um, and then you have the design and bidding cost, which is the proposal that you have in front of you today, which is 22,600. So a total of 40, 422,600. Um, as a reminder of the, the budget that was discussed, we have uh, $600,000 uh, in, in your annual budget here. You have $2, $2 million in, in reserves uh, as well. Um, also just to note, uh, included in this proposal is the some drainage modifications between uh, on Mason Street between Tack and, and Maple Street. This is a first step in resolving uh, the issue at Mason and uh, Maple Street, uh, Ms. Coulson's concern that she's presented to us. So this is a, a first step at addressing that. Uh, just a little bit about how these roads were selected. Um, so staff considers high priority, uh, these roads are high priority improvements because they do not have urgent sanitary or water needs. Um, meaning that we will be chasing down grant dollars to address the utility needs. And so we're selecting roads that do not have utility needs so that we don't have to come back in five years or 10 years and undo the beautiful road that we just put down. So, um, so let's flip to please page 37. Ah, now we're at 37. And I will quickly go over kind of the thought process in this beautiful infograph that um, John Moxie and his team put together for us. We have, there's actually two infographs. One is just general to the capital improvement planning process. You can see all the inputs and kind of the decision-making process that, that goes into it. Makes my head spin. I don't know about you all. Um, and then dialing that in a little bit on page 37, this is specific to road project prioritization process. It's still a lot of inputs here. If I was to rank these, just kind of going around and say, well, okay, how, how do we go about this in, in order? Um, I would rate the PASER ratings, which is the engineer's analysis of the road conditions. It's called like a windshield <laughs> review. Uh, it's very fact-based, right? There's no bias. They just rate the roads as, as they see them, uh, quite literally. Um, and then number two is utility needs, as I just mentioned. And that ties in with grant opportunities. So those two are linked. Yep. Uh, I would consider those number two. Uh, and three is your budget realities, you know, um, you can only get so much done in a given year. You do have a millage uh, that goes back to 2007 um, that ends in 2027, and that's why you have such a healthy road budget. Um, four, uh, traffic volume uh, through road versus dead end road, uh, a little more weight is given to roads that are more frequently used through roads, uh, as an example. Um, five unique needs of the area. Um, so can we solve multiple issues with the with road project? 
Um, so that's something else. That's something else we evaluate. Six is staff limitations. I mean, you have you know two point six million dollars to work with, but um, you still need somebody to manage those projects from from city hall. Tons of interactions with the stakeholders, residents, business owners. Um, so we can only get so much done in a given year. Uh, of course, we have the staff input, DPW, Scott Herbert's gotten much more involved. Holly, I think you commented about that uh, at the last meeting. So, you know, this is, you know, people ask like, well, how do you guys decide what roads you move forward with? This is a good graph um, to, to refer to. In addition to this, uh, I know John Moxie's put together like a three page, really easy to read uh, infrastructure, infrastructure capital improvement guideline. He just sent that to me today. But as we continue to talk about infrastructure being your number one priority uh, as a result of your citizen survey and your strategic planning, I think we need to be able to reference that document and educate residents on what, what we're doing and why we're doing it and how we're doing it. Very okay. Good. Very good. So all that said, um, there is a sample motion somewhere. I'll, um, I'll just ask John if he wants to add anything, oh. and then I will entertain a motion for further council discussion. Sorry, Mr. Mayor, can I jump in Please, real quick in front it. of John? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the bottom paragraph on page 32 uh, also mentions the fact that um, there's some, some more items that are going to be coming in front of you at a future meeting. Um, that includes drainage improvements at Maple and Mason, um, and also um, we're going to be doing your typical pothole work um, and then also crack sealing. So you'll see more proposals coming in front of you as, as we move forward. But these were these two items were urgent. We wanted to get a move on it, especially the next item that I'll, that I'll talk about. Okay. Sorry, John. Yeah, go ahead, John. Anything you'd like to add before I entertain a motion and have council discuss? Thank you. Uh, two quick things. First, uh, Ryan mentioned the document I just sent him today. That was a response to uh, some good council comments um, at the workshop on Wednesday, uh, just kind of requesting how do we how do we make this more user friendly so that we can communicate better with the public, kind of putting some narrative uh, with uh, my big engineering spreadsheet. Uh, so that's a work in process. Uh, wanted to get a draft in front of staff to kind of get a thumbs up on the uh, format, and we'll we'll be building that out uh, from there. Uh, to this project specifically, it's our it's our normal uh, scope of work. Go out and get the survey data, get some soil borings, uh, put to, a design together both for the the road work and for some drainage improvements. Uh, go out and get bidding, and come back to you with those bids with a recommendation of award and a proposal for construction phase engineering. So this is the first of of that uh, process. Uh, again, on schedule. Uh, we're going to try and get the design done this spring so that we can bid this out over the summer and get it constructed yet uh, this uh, calendar year uh, in the fall. Mr. May I have one other note? Feel free. Um, and discussions with John on the process. So they design it, um, then they bid the project, and then there's the construction and there's a construction management component um, that the engineers play. Um, but that has been incorporated in the, the numbers that you see in front of you. So the 400,000 actually does incorporate, contemplate the construction management portion of the project. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, John. Um, I will entertain a motion and then we can have further discussion if need be. Uh, Mr. Mayor, motion to approve the 2023 street improvement engineering proposal from Fleiss and Vandenbrink in the amount of $22,600 and authorize the mayor or mayor pro tem to execute the proposal. A second. So we have a motion Stanton, second Muncie. Um, discussion among the council. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I just want to uh, thank John Moxley and uh, city staff for putting this together. This is this is job one, I believe, for the city is this work right here. And um, my expectation is that, and again, thanks, John, for listening to the comments from last Wednesday's workshop, is to make this understandable for the general person on the street, including myself, this sometimes goes over my head, but um, I do really appreciate the detail that's been put in here and the explanation and your experience and your firm's experience with the city, I think puts you in a good unique position to kind of understand the needs of the community, because I, I'm sure some folks may say, number one, where's West, East, Tacken and Taylor? <laughs> number one. Uh, number two is why are those important? And uh, that question, I think, has been answered in the way that I read this, is that those are streets that, as you said, don't require sanitary improvements or major work, um, de definitely need the repaving, and that allows some work to get completed as well as work down at uh, Maple and Mason. 
but also we have a lot of other projects on the capital improvement plan that, you know, from my role sitting here, that's what I look for the city manager along with the experts, the engineers, the finance, financial people, the DPW, to make sure this work gets done on a yearly basis. You know, really, once we set this and off it goes, we just need reports on how this is working out. Of course, you know, there's always bumps in the road, no pun intended, but um, I'm just really pleased that we're getting some traction on this, no pun intended there either, <laughs> um, that this works moving forward. I think it's excellent. People, this is what they really expect. And what I heard from a lot of folks is, you know, just get the damn roads fixed paraphrase the uh, governor. So the last question is the, uh, this does not include the capital improvement or the project for city hall and the information booth, correct? That's a separate budget line item. Thank you. Yes. The answer was yes. Yes. Thank you. Uh, the other question is the 177, 400 um, that's left over, if I want to use that term, from the $600,000 road budget. Part of that will be going into Mason and Maple, correct? And then the crack regular ceiling, paving, crack ceiling, and, and potholes, yeah. and we'll have a healthy contingency. Just, yeah. I should say, okay. if things should go sideways, which they often do with the, any road project. I, I'm just, I'm very pleased. This is exactly what, I love roads. So, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> we'll get you a bumper sticker. And, and according to a community survey, so do our residents. Yeah. So, yes. uh, wonderful. Any, well done. any other council comments? Just that I spoke to a couple uh, residents from Tacken Street, and um, I know that they will be very pleased. And just today, this morning, um, they didn't know about this. They knew that we were working on roads and uh, let them know that we, they were a priority for us. So the sooner the better. I think they're going to be very happy to hear our decision today. Great. I agree. I think the other thing that's worth noting in this report from the engineers on page uh, 34 uh, these numbers have been shared numerous times, but I think it's important to emphasize that the engineers have already identified because we have, as a municipality, we have a requirement by the state that we have to have every applicable lead service replaced by January 1st, 2041. Uh, that seems a ways off, but it really will be very quick once it gets here. And I just appreciate the um, um, the engineers already done the work in terms of identifying where we may have work to do. That would become part of the calculus to actually set up the rest of the the rest of the CIP and where's that work going to, because there might be money coming down the down the road. Okay, okay. I'm mm -hmm. pulling puns tonight. Um, <laughs> down the road from the state for the federal government on this, and and um, I, I I think we have some good groundwork laid to make sure we stay on track with this. Also, upon groundwork. Holly, you you <laughs> for honey. Um, I would just um you know, re reiterate uh, what Russ said, uh, this Michigan lead and copper rule. I think it's just really important that people understand that any construction that we undertake, we are, are obligated by law to be looking at your leads. And you can tell, as Russ pointed out, the numbers here, you know, we have 229 services of unknown material. We do not know what might be in your lead. So um, I know people, uh, Dick Waskin, hello. I know people get very frustrated and everyone wants the roads fixed. There's a lot of, of uh, red and orange roads on that map that need to be repaired. Um, but this is, uh, something that people need to realize because of Flint, um, you know, we have the duty to make sure that your leads are are healthy um, for the water to your house. And I, I also want to reiterate what I said at the workshop. I was so happy to see how much DPW is working with police and Vandenberg. Everybody can see from DPW's report, they have spent a lot of time on this. And I think that the citizens will benefit from that partnership. So I thank Ryan and um, Fleece and DPW for having a new format. Thanks, Holly. Uh, anything, Helen, you good? Uh, Lauren, anything? Okay, great. Um, with that, uh, we have a motion on the floor. This is a roll call vote, I believe. So um, would the clerk please call the roll? Baldwin? Yes. Dean? Yes. Gardner? Yes. Leo? Yes. Was this excused? Muncie? Yes. Sam? Yes. Very good. Motion carries. 
That takes us to item 16, Bravo, resolution. Well, one second. Oh, if I missed something, Mr. Five. Mayor, it's okay. We, Where have uh, we gone? No, it's the conversation went into the next drinking water. The, the next proposal, and that's okay. Another one. Oh, sorry. There's two? Two, separate, two separate proposals. Oh, now you've done it. But you've already had the conversation about the, the lead and copper rules, so you don't need to do that again, maybe. Uh, okay. Uh, so you could just go into that sample motion if you'd like. Mr. Mayor. Go, yeah, go for it. <laughs> Motion to approve the proposal for professional services from Fleece and Vandenbrink to assist in submitting the drinking water state revolving fund project plan in the amount of $16,000 and to authorize the mayor or mayor pro tem to execute the proposal. I'll second. Good. Motion Stanton, second Muncie. Um, so it sounds like we've exhausted our discussion. I'm very embarrassed that I neglected to mention that since that <laughs> it deals with my day job. Uh, so very embarrassing. Um, so I don't think we do have any further discussion, do we? No. no. So now we can do a second roll call, I believe. Would the clerk please call the roll? Baldwin? Yes. Dean? Yes. Gardner? Yes. Leo? Yes. Lewis is excused. Muncie? Yes. Stanton? Yes. Great, thanks. Now, we, I believe, are ready to address new business item 16B, resolution 2313-A, short-term rental task force recommended by planning commission. This will be a roll call vote. It's on page 47. Who's gonna kick this off, Ryan? See? Yeah, good evening, mayor and uh, city council. Um, as you know from your workshop meeting last week, uh, you discussed that the uh, on February 2nd, the Planning Commission uh, passed a formal resolution recommending that the City Council form um, a uh, short-term rental task force uh, in accordance with Section 4.28 of your City Charter. Uh, the City Council discussed that recommendation by the Planning Commission um, and um, advised staff that you did wish to form such a uh, task force and wish to uh, discuss um, passing a resolution tonight that would do just that. Um, in your packet is a uh, draft resolution that was prepared based on the Planning Commission's recommendations. Uh, at your workshop meeting, you discussed that uh, you may have some potential modifications that you want to make to this draft resolution. Councilmember Baldwin has submitted some suggestions that I think she wants to discuss with all of you that we can go through as a, as a group and make some changes uh, on the fly before you actually vote on uh, a formal resolution yourself creating this task force. Um, and just for, you know, uh, folks that maybe weren't at the, the workshop uh, meeting, if you'd like, I can kind of outline essentially that the Planning Commission's uh, recommendation was to form um, uh, a nine member uh, group um, with various folks uh, that were residents, business owners, or property owners from the community. Um, they made a recommendation that this group kind of have some, some parity as far as short-term rental owners and non-short-term rental owners uh, to have some balance in the discussion that, um, uh, that they would have. But the short-term rental task force, they kind of outline what that purpose should be, um, what they would look at over the next several months, and that this task force would report back to the city council and the planning commission um, in September with what their recommendations are. So you could have a further uh, policy discussion about how you wish to uh, proceed. Uh, the short-term rental task force will uh, be formed or created in accordance with your um, uh, board selection policy in the sense that um, if you create this task force, we'll accept applications. Um, the mayor and 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 whoever else he maybe designates will kind of form a committee to uh, interview folks, and then he'll bring back his recommendations on who would actually sit on the committee. And then from there, um, each of the task force um, meetings will be uh, subject to the Open Meetings Act. We'll actually notice them, provide agendas, um, um, we'll prepare minutes. Um, and then folks will have, you know, anybody from the public will have an opportunity opportunity to uh, provide public comments and feedback and, and be involved in that process throughout. So happy to answer any questions, uh, unless you want to get into discussing the, the draft resolution. Just a, just a procedural question, you know, since we don't have a motion yet, we have some things to discuss. How do we approach entering into deliberations as a council on this? Any thoughts on that? I would just go straight into deliberations. Okay. Um, Mr. Mayor, if you'd like me to just give a brief outline of what you discussed, the process to be yeah, go ahead. from your workshop, and then Ryan can, RC can add anything that he'd like. 
at your workshop, you discussed um, ma making some refinements to the resolution as presented by the Planning Commission. That was very deliberative that you just wanted the only resolution presented in the packet was the one that was coming from the Planning Commission. We we've done that. The discussion revolved around how should um, council members have input before this meeting that so that we could get it in the packet. Uh, we discussed what not to do is to submit like possible resolutions or refinements of the resolutions from each of the council members, but just to go ahead and send bullet points to staff so that we can put that in a one page or a two page and you can have discussions around that. Imagine if you had like six different resolutions to, to shuffle through. It turns out we only had one uh, council member submit, so that actually would have been just fine, but um, here we are. Um, so you, you do have a number of points that um, Helen has presented that are included in the packet on page 62. Yep. My thought was to um, just mm -hmm. go ahead and like number those on that white piece of paper over there. Um, and then Helen can go through them point by point and describe, you know, what, what, what she's attempting to accomplish. And then as, as the council moves through uh, this, I, I would recommend just getting consensus on each point. So when you're done with however many tweaks that you want to make, you have consensus on all of them uh, or to the extent possible, and then you can go ahead and, and make a motion uh, rather than just going point by point without making a decision on them. And at the very end, after 25 minutes of deliberation, you forgot what the first thing you were talking about was. So right. um, that was just my recommendation, but Mr. Mayor, if you or Council, if you have any other ideas. Well, just one observation. We're also um, blessed to have the chair of planning here, Steve Manns. So uh, is there a way that we can make sure we include him in the deliberation since he's been instrumental in getting us to this point and may be the only one that has some of the answers that we need as we deliberate? Mm -hmm. Knowledge and the council's prerogative certainly would be appropriate. Great. And Council Member Baldwin, does, does this format work for you? It does. Um, and I just wanted to say, first of all, that I do appreciate all the hard work that planning put into this and creating this task force. Um, at the outset, I was not um, in favor of creating the task force. I felt like planning and council should get to it. Lost that battle. I'm good with that. That's democracy. Um, and I'm, I, uh, when we were presented with this, the, the difference is, is that this, um, at that time, I proposed that we that we engage with a professional planning firm, and that was agreed to. So my biggest concern is that this resolution from the Planning Commission does not reflect the fact that we've agreed now to engage with a professional planning firm. Um, everything in as I went through and I and I made certain suggestions like what I would do or whatever, and that's fine. That's what I would do. Again, it's a democracy. I think that we can get to something. What I don't want to do is have a, a bunch of delays created, and I don't want it to look like I. Uh, disregarded anything that planning had to say. I just think the facts had changed since we got the resolution and the resolution we only received five days ago. And it is our job as council to make comments on resolutions before we blindly adopt. Yeah. Um, and the analysis we saw from, from a, a neighboring, somewhat neighboring community, Sutton's Bay, I thought was very useful. And, and, and I was impressed with that work. It's an independent firm. Um, and that I think it was new information that came before the planning commission was on the path with this resolution. So, and I'm, I'm mindful that it's going to take the chair and myself time uh, because I'm expecting a lot of people being interested in being in interviewing for, for this, this group. Um, so personally, I would like the councils to, to go ahead or staff to, to be um, enabled to go ahead and get this, this independent analysis underway. Uh, so when we do have this group stood up, uh, they'll have some some facts to look at. They'll have some data because what I found really good about that report was, you know, it just gave folks the lay of the land. You know, they did a really detailed analysis of different different districts within a community. You know, they got hard numbers. I think everybody has an opinion on how many short term rentals are in this community. And I think you could ask any one of us, and we'd come up with a different number. So I think that would be very valuable uh, to this work group, and I would hate for them to have to wait for that piece of work. So. Uh, my proposal would be to turn it over to staff to find the right firm. Uh, I don't really, I, I feel that firm is completely independent. I don't, I mean, if somebody disagrees, but I think we did discuss it a bit at our work group and felt, everyone felt like, you know, it's a very, very specialized firm. It's a way to get this moving quickly and just to get some facts and, and some data into the, into the room for, for this work group. 
Mr. Mayor, I uh, think RC might have some comments along yeah. those lines. Yeah, the, the resolution that's before you tonight, you know, does, you know, based on the Planning Commission's recommendation was that um, this task force receive a budget for data and insight gathering and consultant planner assistance. So I, why I understood it from your, your workshop meeting, I heard you loud and clear that you want a professional planning firm that's that works with short-term rental regulations on a regular basis. And you provided um, a, a great recommendation on who that should be. Um, so if this, assuming this resolution passes tonight, um, staff's plan is to work on engaging in those professional services to let them know what you've passed, what you're forming and have that professional planning firm guide this task force in the work as we go along over the next several months. Yeah, I appreciate if go, go, go ahead. I appreciate the delineation that the professional planning firm should guide the task force and not the other way around. Um, go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, Mayor. So to make sure I understand, the information that came back from Sutton's Bay, um, are we saying that we're that we're going with that firm? Is that what I'm? That hearing? was not a recommendation of mine. I would just brought that up as okay. an example. Um, so from a consulting standpoint. I don't know how far down this road we're going to have to go, but depending on the value of that contract, it may put it into an RFP category as well. I would, again, emphasize that it's very important for our citizens and business owners to understand that this is going to be an arm's length process and that consultants should be arm's length as well. And we should try to get the best that we can with the resources available. Um, there's a lot out there. There's a lot of companies and consultants that have done this kind of work, you know, probably hundreds of times. So we should try to seek the best and affordable for the city of Saugatuck. So I, I want to make sure there wasn't just one firm saying, yeah, we're going with this because we've gotten a response from this one. So. No, no, I'm, I'm not married to, to one. Yeah. My, my okay. primary interest is, 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 you know, not waiting for this work group to, to pull the trigger on doing this RFP. I, I would, I would put it to staff to start the work. I, I trust the staff to do the, to, if it's not, if it needs to be an RFP, so be it, but to find that firm and identify that firm and get that moving quickly so so it's not waiting on the work group to get stood up and steve I, you, you please I, you wanted to <clears throat> yeah. one the one thing that i was thinking based on steve can you uh, could you move one thing i was thinking mic? based on the council's comments in the workshop was in that last part of the resolution just to kind of make it clear, because Ryan did just refer to the fact that we do talk about having a budget for data and insight gathering and consultant planning assistance. That when I, when I, several people who have read that, they thought that it was a task force that would have that budget to hire that consultant. And I think we, you know, I would say to probably amend it to make it very clear that it is the city council that is, you know, hiring or, you know, putting out an RFP for. The consultant and that the consultant's role would be to, to you know to help gather that data and to be the lead for the commission because i know when, when we kind of wrote it we all understood that it, it wasn't the task force that was going to be hiring the consultant but it could be interpreted that way by some so i wanted to, that's the way that i read that's, it I know that's how thank it, you for clarifying and so i do do think that that might want to be um revised in there that it we're would gonna be the council we're going to try to capture that right now I guess it would be up to the city council or if he, if the managers to kind of decide, like Russ was saying, you know, would this require maybe like a second, you know, resolution for you guys to approve an RFP be you know, put out for yes. the yeah. hiring of yeah, this. Yeah. And I would think that that would probably be advisable as a second resolution or a vote mm -hmm. because it probably, you know, the question is going to come up as to how did you decide who you hired? Yeah. And I think that if you put it out, and I know there's some people in the room, I've even like Holly, who's on the planning commission, who's here tonight, has told me that in some of her work, she's actually gotten RFP requests, with, gave her a week to reply. You don't want to make it too short, but at the same time, I think we could probably put it out and try to ask them to do a quick reply so that by the time we would solicit interest from citizens and those who want to be on the task force, do the interviews, mm -hmm. we could possibly have the firm hired at the same time that we're trying to announce the uh, the committee. That, that's kind of the thoughts. Um, <clears throat> the only thing else, oh, also in the that last part, that resolution where it says resolve point three, um, and this is a very good point, and I don't know how we missed it, but we have that it would be do written and verbal reports to the planning commission during our planning meetings 
I know that Ross you know, reports back into city council, but I do think this task force probably should have their reports to the planning commission and city council on a monthly basis. So I would just be adding that in uh, to that resolution. And then on the fifth whereas it's in the report, where we were just kind of identifying the um, the last paragraph after we talk about the they should include and prioritize the short term rental concerns, issues, and opportunities held by the residents, property, and business owners of the city. I thought the work for or the at the workshop it became very a very good point was to make certain that we also maybe right there include like the school boards and the police. I mean, I know that they are citizens or, you know, residents, many of them, but at the same time, you know, just to kind of put that in because that it was one of the topics that we wanted to make certain that we are hearing from, you know, through the task force. We want to give that kind of guidance. But that was probably the um, couple of the things that I have kind of taken away from the workshop um, would recommend. Can I clarify that? Was the tracking? Yeah, okay. If, if you could, Steve, again, just for the clarification was in that fifth whereas. And at the end of it, when we talk about them gathering, is it basically it reads the purpose and priorities of the short term rental task force should include identifying and prioritizing current short term rental concerns, issues, opportunities, and objectives held by residents, property owners, and business property and business owners of the city. I was just thinking right in there, it could be residents, property and business owners, school board, you know, somehow school board, and maybe even like the uh, police because the police has to deal with any of the issues that we have regarding short-term rentals. Um, so like just in the, just that section, just kind of somehow including them. Yeah, start listing them out, or is there a way we can capture that? Like all stakeholders, or do we feel it's important to call out each group just for I didn't, inclusion? Yeah, I just, it just kind of came up in the workshop. And since we did you know, list residents, property and business owners, I must, since I don't know everyone who's on well, the police or how, the school board, are they, would they fall into, into that category? So I was just curious. I mean, oh, go ahead. why don't we just have the community or the committee uh, dictate those? It's perfect too. Because because one of the points- This is a very that, healthy discussion that we're right. already having. And that's, so. what, that's one of the things that I do think that we tried to do. And I think, and I do appreciate with what Helen was trying to do was like, let's try to give it as much flexibility as possible. But we wanted to make certain that with the flexibility, you don't want it, you want to have enough transparency that people didn't assume. Mm -hmm. Because with transparency, or with no transparency, with flexibility, you're really assuming that the people who are making the decisions are you know, being impartial or being fair versus with the transparency by listing everything out, you're actually showing them really what the true intentions are. And so that's, if that was, if that was a concern about the school board, or of like the uh, police of the works. I was trying to figure out where it could possibly fit in. And I thought that would be the appropriate place. Okay, thanks for that, Steve. Let's pause a second on these points and make sure we're all comfortable in an agreement. I mean, I'm, I'm very much in favor of staff doing the process. So when this work group shows up, they've got tools to work with. Mm -hmm. So I think we're all I'm mm -hmm. feeling like council leading on hiring a professional service firm, city staff will lead in the process. There'll, there'll be an RFP, there'll be a resolution before council. So I think I think we feel good ab about that. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm seeing yeah, good assent. Yeah, for that. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and I think dual reporting. I'm seeing both council and commission will will get the reports from mm -hmm. from this work group. Absolutely. Yeah. So we have we have agreement there. Council and and, and um, the third one was was sort of in, engagement of a lot of relevant stakeholder groups. Um, and I, now, let's be clear: did we want to be very explicit or more general? And just you know, the the goal is to be you know try to find the all relevant stakeholders. All stakeholders. Mm -hmm. With yeah, with mine, I was I was keeping it more general as to identify all stakeholders, and I'm fine with if we outline them. I'm fine if we just keep it general to you know, leave it flexible. But yes, I'm I'm good with that with adding the the uh, police and uh, uh, school board as stakeholders. I absolutely believe that they are. Now, what I would say is that I don't necessarily think it's important to. I'm sorry. We're going line by line. <laughs> yeah, let's yeah, go right ahead. So let's see. Three points. Yeah, go ahead, Brooke. Yeah, yeah, Mayor, back to this. The um, I think we have to entrust that the group that's going to be selected to do this is going to be knowledgeable about the community, mm -hmm. is going to know who to yes. include. And the fact of the matter is, is that 
you're going to have enough people paying attention to this that people are going to raise their hand and say, hey, I've not been spoken to or I've not been asked. I agree with that. So yeah. that's incumbent on this group to do that work. And two is I frankly don't think you can do this work without having that professional consultant. The lift involved with this, this resolution as presented essentially makes every single point that this group will need to accomplish with professional assistance. I just don't see how you can. That was I mean, my concern. If I, I don't may. see how you could do it because the concern. city staff resources are not there to, to assist right. with this at a great level. There will be involvement. So I, I, I just don't see how this doesn't move. That was my concern with that. initially having a task force. I was concerned that we, we that would not be able to do this and it was just going to drag something out. So for hiring professional services firm that changed my mind on this 100%. Yeah. Great, great. And and reading the Sutton's Bay material really elucidates why exactly. you want that. I mean, I read that and I was like, well, okay, Mr. Consultant. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, not recreating the wheel. Good. Not so recreating the wheel. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, and it and lots to be able to mm -hmm. figure yes. out. Yes. And to Scott's point, that gives that empowers your committee. We're moving very quickly. We have data points, and while we're forming this group, so yeah. I so think I, I feel wise. like I, I feel like we've got consensus from the chair and from council. Uh, Ryan and Ryan, do you feel like you have captured this? Uh, yeah, I'm, you I'm, just I'm, put all stakeholders here, or just leave it as it is. I, oh, can we say the committee? Yeah. Can we yeah. leave it to the committee to committee defined? Stakeholders. I mean, can we leave it to the committee or? Go, go ahead. I think what you're trying to do at the end. I think you want to take a vote on this tonight. Yes. So okay. we, we got to be really clear, like, not point it back to the committee. Well, whatever language you use, it just needs to be super clear because it's likely not to come back in front of you. They're not going to make any more refinements after tonight, as I understand. Ms. That's right. Mr. Manager, if I may. Yeah. Go ahead. Mr. Man, five, no, in two. my one, two, three, four, five, six, in my seventh, whereas, and it's very short, an objective should be to abstain stakeholder input and available data regarding the impact of short-term rentals on at least the following, the quality of life for both full-time and part-time residents, the success of local restaurant, hospitality, retail, and other businesses in the city, yeah. the availability of workforce housing, enrollment levels, and other consequences for local schools and public safety. I'm uh, out of all due respect, I, I think that we should not put that in there because I think, again, we're going to need to trust this process. And I think that the people that will be involved and be asked to serve on this will be fully aware of those needs without listing it specifically. I'm more in favor of keeping this as it's been developed, keeping areas very specific where needed in general, where more appropriate. So I get concerned about where we're so specific in who should be serving on this committee, or I'm sorry, task force. We need to be calling it a task force. I understand that. But we get very prescriptive about who is to serve on it, but we don't get prescriptive about who should be, um, I guess, solicited for input. And I would be shocked if those people that didn't get asked or people that people are going to be raising their hands to talk about this. I so I have yeah. no. I have no concerns at all that people that want to be involved in this process are going to put their hands up and be involved. Is so, there is there a way we can sort of reconcile this though? So I like so, Steve's proposal that we add um, school and uh, public safety officers. Well, fifth whereas I think it was your fifth whereas. At least it puts it there. I agree with you saying all stakeholders. Do you have to identify the stakeholders? I don't think you actually have to. But if you wanted to make certain that we're building the school system and public safety, this, right at the end of that spot, section that five, the whereas we're just adding school and please here instead of here. In the long list of I, I yes. Yes. had residents, property, mm -hmm. residents, property and business owners, mm -hmm. schools, public safety, and community stakeholders and other community stakeholders, right? And, I can work with that. I think that that would be fine. I've got, I've, I've got uh, Russ and, and Helen kind of coming together in a consensus on this. So let's try to capture that. Schools, yeah. public safety, public safety, and yep. objectives held by the residents, property and business owners, schools, public safety, and and other community stakeholders. Great. So. Are we, yeah. team, are we good? Yeah. Team, we good? Okay. Yep. 
Right. And then in the, I'll therefore be it resolved. We'll make sure that the language is modified to indicate that the final recommendations in September go to the planning commission and city council and that the monthly updates go to the planning commission and city council. Yes. Okay. And you strike the language about receiving a budget for data and insights gathering consultant planner assistance, that language should be stricken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we're, we're going to we're we're, we're going to run that parallel. So yeah, yeah. And, and I would oh, sorry, I missed that. No, just a bit, Talon was just basically saying, yeah, we can strike that because we're we're basically running the parallel process of the, of doing the RFP and and doing that. So what go ahead. Where is that? Oh, I'm sorry. That's in the be it resolved. Yeah, the third point three. Resolve point three. Yeah, and then the third resolved point three. Third point three. Uh, receive a budget for data and insight gathering and consultant planning assistance. Are we going to stand number three? Because I would like some other language stricken if we are. I would like to suggest it. As, um, does this make sense to strike the budget sentence? Yep. Okay. I follow. Um, I was just going to add in terms of the reporting, I think it's going to become part of the contractual agreement with the consultant, whoever we hire, that their reporting will require reports to the planning commission, city council at appropriate, as opposed to yeah. just, yeah. I, mean, I think I, that would be, that, yeah, that, that would be part of the task force. That yeah, right. right. Commission, okay. Yeah. Um, and this is something that we need to discuss. And I think, so we had two, two things that we talked about at the workshop that I thought we had clarity on, but I wasn't certain. One, and that is important to me, um, and I don't know uh, where we talk about uh, after your whereas is after we suggest, after your proposal suggests the people that should be on this task force, it says the members of the short-term rental task force should be residents, property, or business owners of the city of Saugatuck. I believe that um, the task force should consist of residents only. Now, I know there was discussion on that, and Steve, I, I believe you have a view, in the, and you, your group just did discuss it at length. So it was discussed, and I think, and I can I go back and forth because I can see you know both points. But one of the things that I felt was, if we are looking at this, there could be property owners who are here four to six months a year, mm -hmm. but they are not actual voters or residents, permanent residents of the city. And if they have some ability, if they wanted to be on the task force and they applied and they have the ability to be here for the meetings and they, they were a good resource and we thought that they were favorable, I'd like to have, we thought that we would want to have that as a possibility only because they are paid property taxes within the city of Sagatuck on, on that property. Um, so that's, that's and so we wanted a lot of us to have a little larger pool of those who may be interested in serving on the task force, although I have no concern that we won't have enough <laughs> applications to fill the task force, even if we made it residents only, but by having it residents or business owners, because then I thought that since we are looking to have at least that what business owner on the task force, I wasn't certain if all the business owners who may have the most to offer are residents of the city of Sagatuck. They may be resident of Douglas or, or Sagatuck Township. Mm -hmm. But yet they are a business owner and, again, are paying taxes to the city of Sagatuck and could be an asset. So I think that's why the planning commission felt that it should be residents or property or business owners. I would submit that, that the task force job is to solicit feedback from all of those folks and that their voices will still be heard, but that the task force should be. How does the rest of council feel about to the task force be? Residents, I'm one person. Well, I, I called you about this today because I was kind of, we discussed it. And one of the things that you said to me, it's, it, it, I think it's good to hear from, I mean, we, ha we have plenty of neighbors who we adore, who, you know, don't live here year round, uh, may rent out or uh, be second home residents, but we do represent voters at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. and the people that live here year-round. And those are the people who put us here. So I do, after speaking to you, I do feel more of a responsibility to residents, primary residents. And yeah, uh, yeah, and, and I fully respect that. And, and, and I think this is going to be a numbers game, frankly, for 
the process because we're going to find that the total number of residents in town is what 899 i think per the census mm -hmm. so then you start carving out people that are not going to be here etc then you get down to the subject matter right you get down to some of these roles are going to be specific to uh, one member from a short-term rental property management group just suppose there's not a person that's a resident that could fulfill that role mm -hmm. I actually well have. well I so let me finish mm -hmm. that I just don't want to constrain this process with just the resident only rule and I used the bald head work group as an example we had three members that were not residents however they were subject matter experts and they were selected specifically because of their knowledge of the engineering up there so I use that as an example of saying um, I think we can, I, I, I personally come to going forward with the way it's written. And then if we run into some issues where we cannot identify candidates, then we can discuss that. I mean, this is a work in process. Lauren, were you going to say something? Um, you know, I think it residents should be, a you know, a priority. And if we do run into issues, but I don't think we will. I think there's enough residents that we should be able to make this group made up of people who vote in our area. I, I, Mr. Bear. I, I'm sympathetic to I'll, just a moment. I, I'm, I'm sympathetic to what Holly and, and Lauren are articulating. Uh, I hate to use the word bias, but but I, I do think you know there should be a weighting toward you know if you know as we select these these candidates, if they are a resident, that would be a voting resident. You know that would be I think a strong um, a credential that they would bring that that would be should be given a certain weight in our in our discussion, but I agree, we may run into a situation. I mean, it. I know this is a very popular issue and we are getting a lot of interest in it, but you know, it can be challenging to, it, this is gonna be a big lift and it's it's, it's gonna be a, require a lot of work from people that are gonna volunteer their time to do this. So that we do, we very well may run into the situation where we are not able to find somebody that checks all those boxes. I do think the box of residency and being a voter in Saugatuck is, is a huge, is is a huge qualification that needs to be given some weight, a lot of weight. Um, so, I, if there's a way that we can, you know, not be tied to to the residency requirement, but the residency requirement, I think, would give the chair and myself something that we would look very favorably on in selection of of these members, and they would, you know, they would they would probably get a priority in terms of if, if all other things being equal. Uh, Steve, go ahead. Uh, your thoughts. Oh, that's you. Would... Uh, hitting right on what I was going to say is that, you know, in the application, when they will modify that application somewhat that we use for boards and committees, and there's a, well, like the third question asked, are you a city, are you a resident of the city? You know, so they will check that. And I think that's no question, you know, that we'd want to give a priority to anyone who's a resident first. Mm -hmm. um, and, that, but then having that leeway that if you didn't have it, then you could fall back. Or if you had someone who is, maybe somehow been actively involved in this process previously, again, even if they weren't a resident, but the, you felt that they offered something. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I think it's one of the things that we kind of talked about, you guys talked about at the workshop was, you know, do we want to try to make it, you know, where we got flexibility or you want to try to identify it? And this is probably one area where I think having the flexibility is beneficial and trusting that the elected official, you know, Scott as mayor, you know, will look at prioritization you know, of having at least the majority, if not all, you know, residents. I think if we came back with a recommendation for, you know, the task force and you had six non-residents on it, there could be some questions as to, you know, how that happened. Indeed. So. Uh, Gregory, Gregory, then then Helen will, will, will pick yeah, up. Yeah, I wanted to echo what everybody is saying. I believe when we talked at our workshop, we all came to the, uh, uh, to almost an agreement that we should put our residents um, number one, when selecting for this committee, um, but there there might be an exclusion. For the, I'm looking for a member of a retail, restaurant, or lodging. We have businesses that have been here 20, 30 years of folks that have successful businesses that might be helpful um, with input uh, on that committee, but don't live here. Like you were saying, live maybe just in the township or, you know, live over in Dan Brown over there at the okay. uh, t-shirt shop in there for 40 years. You know, there's a lot of folks here. So, I, um, but uh, it sounds like the consensus, the conversation that we're having here, um, I believe that's the, that's where we're going. So I think we should probably leave it as it's written in the, uh, just yeah, give them that. Flex. Helen, is, is there a word that, yeah. would, that, that would, that would sort of, uh, you know, based on the, on the the consensus you're hearing from the council, is is there language that I think that might help? I thank you for asking, and I think that as long as we keep it 
So the, and I don't know how you want to say it, that there has to be uh, an attempt to first fill this with qualified individuals that are residents in the case that we are not able to do that, then we have to, I don't know. How, how about if we say primarily residents? Yeah, uh, if I could, Mayor, I, you know, add one on that line that's highlighted, we could say with a preference given to city residents or with preference being given. That would be an easy and quick way to say it. I, I could. <laughs> Can, I, I, can we support that? Yes. Yeah, I, I've, yep. I've, I trust yep. the yes. process. I, I do trust too. this without even changing the language. I, I, I can hear. I can I tell. Trust. I'm sorry. I can tell by our conversation here. I think we're going in that direction. I don't think we really need to worry about it. I think as it's written, I think it's good enough as it is. Hey. I can tell that's where you're going. That's where we're going. I, I, I'm, it, yeah. I, I mean, having. Yeah, like this is a this is a contract. So right. I mean, I I think to our manager's point, we need to be a specific. If we have a desire to change something, it needs to reflect that. And so if we can say primarily or giving preference, let's do that. Mm -hmm. So I agree. Preference should be given to with preference. Uh, yeah, to just a very minor. It's just a short line, just like you said, RC. Helen, thoughts? Thank you. I was waiting for my turn to talk. Um, I think that where we're going to get hung up mostly, and because this is this is the place that I that I have my biggest hang up. The rest of the stuff we can talk about, and you know, like I said, I looked it over and, and given just a day, went through and said this is this is not necessarily the way I would do it. Here's what I would recommend, but I think all of us could do that if we took the time to do it. And so again, it is not a it is not a, a, a criticism of the what the planning commission pr produced. It's more me seeing it as our job to look at it and ask questions. The thing that I probably have the largest uh, uh, opposition to would it's this in this item three, um, the city council adopts the planning commission's recommendation that the short terminal task force be selected in accordance with city council's boards and commission selection policy. This line I do not like. Have parity as close as possible between short-term rental owners and non-short-term rental owners. I believe that this would produce an appearance that the task force is gonna be stacked in such a way that is detrimental to residents. I wanna say that I think we already have heard a lot from our investors. We have, like we said earlier, 900 residential parcels. Of that 90 roughly are in areas where short-term rentals are banned by housing association, associations and bylaws, leaving 810 parcels, parcels available. Uh, the planning commission con contracted with a um, firm and they uh, grabbed all of the people that are advertising short-term rentals that are going even, some of them are registered with the city, some of them are not, that's 390. So we're at a saturation rate of about 50%. We're hearing from our investors, okay? And I think that to say that we have to have parity 50% on this task force have to be people that are short-term rental owners. I am opposed to that. Which, I, I'm Go, sorry, which, which bullet point was that? It's line item three, um, parity, and it's also Jamie's highlighted. Oh, and oh, it's yeah. also in, and it's also in the 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 um suggested people, right? A member, you know, it, with the the parity. To me, parity means equality, right? right? Fifty fifty. It's not oh, you know, uh, we have a twenty percent business, so we'll have twenty percent business here. Parity to me means half and half. We are already. If you tell any other city that we've got a 50% saturation rate with short-term rental properties, their heads would spin. Okay, so we have to be really careful when we talk about what we're doing here. And the idea that we have parity between investors and residents does not sit right with me as a resident. Okay, well, how about, I, I, can, see, I can see your concern with the word parity and, and what that could be interpreted to mean. How about something to the effect that um, reflects as close as possible um, the interests of short-term rental owners and non-short-term rental owners. I am fine with us having interests. I think that we should have town halls. I think that everyone should be heard. I think our stakeholders should be heard. I do not believe that we should box ourselves into a situation where the task force has to have 50% of it an interest in short-term rentals. I don't think that that's good for our community. Well, I, I, I agree that trying to hit a number is, is awfully prescriptive given that, you know, how complicated this is. So something that just, I think to me, the intent of that is to reflect a wide range of, of, of views and experiences. So is, is Stevie thoughts? Yeah, I think that when we try to lay it out, you know, with the nine person 
you know, with three of them coming from council and planning. So that's one third. Then you have six open positions and we tried to determine the uh, different sections of the community. And then if you look at it, you've got a, three individuals that would be, the preference would be that they'd be non-short-term rental. Uh, we've even identified a few of them, like, you know, if we can find the realtor who's not the short-term rental. And then we have three categories where they are involved and would be viewed as favorable to short-term rentals. At least in our, we would assume that they probably are. And so that would, that gives you almost like a parity you know, even when it comes to who's going to be on it from planning and um, city council, you know, we have members within the planning group that are not short-term rental owners. We have some members on the planning commission that are. So when we're kind of composing it, we can you know, determine how do we keep it as close to, you know, a four or five, I mean, for nine people, it's not going to be a 50-50. So it is going to end up, and I think in a perfect world, we would have five to four, and hopefully everyone who's on the task force, and this is what it falls back on, the interviews and the application, is one of the things I know that I would want to hear from them is, are they open-minded? They can tell me that they're a short-term rental you know, owner, property owner, or they're in favor of you know, status quo. But are they open to, you know, listening to all the researching, all the data, you know, reviewing it, gathering the information um, so that they can be part of the committee you know, and sharing their input? Um, so I think it's, you know, we can change to the interest, but and like it says in there, it was parity as close as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, if it was six, three, that might be as close as we could get. If it was five, four, then that is parity for our nine person committee. Other voices, other thoughts? I, I continue to be in support of the way this is written by the Planning Commission and recommended. Yeah. Y'all good with that consensus? Mm -hmm. I think it's point by point. I trust everybody doing the process is essentially what I'm saying is I have implicit trust in the, in the mayor, city manager, chair of the Planning Commission, zoning administrator to do this right. They've heard our concerns and thoughts. This is a document that can certainly be adopted if needed. We find holes in it. Um, yeah, it can so, be amended, as you said, yeah, and yeah. Um, I absolutely agree with Russ. Okay. Okay. Any other council thoughts on this? I just want to thank Helen for the time and interest, and I. Um, she changed my mind on a few. Uh, issues today. We had a very good conversation. So I think that this is the way the process is designed. And actually, I almost wish we had another workshop because we really haven't done anything on this issue. And I, I know that we want to be very responsive to the community, but the, I mean, we're going quite quickly here. Yeah. Um, but again, we are trying to get a group together and we are trying to get a consultant hired. But I do want to acknowledge that what Helen did is the way this should work. It it should be a collaborative Completely process. Agree. So, I, uh, and uh, and to acknowledge the work that the planning uh, committee did too. And I everyone is taking this, you know, giving it so much thought and care because it's very important to our community. Mm -hmm. So, Helen, do you feel like you've raised all the points you you, you, you want to raise? Um, not entirely. I believe that um, I would like more language in there about how the role of the committee is to engage with stakeholders and gather information and that the role of, and we don't have to include, so that, that should be in there, engage with stakeholders and gather information. I get very concerned when they say that they should formulate recommendations on policies, practices, fees. These are the things that I would expect to see from our professional firm that understands fees, zoning, how this should go. I am not comfortable with leaving that to a task force. I want that, and again, it, this needs to be done, absolutely. But this was written without the knowledge that we were going to hire a professional firm. I, that's, I think we need I, to take out some of that knowledge, I some would, of that wording. Um, Councilmember Baldwin, I, I would take exception to that. That was discussed in the resolution preparation is that we would be engaging with a consultant for the work. It doesn't look reflected in this. It was discussed at the meeting. It's um, not reflected the, in the ordinance. The, in the as resolution. a matter of fact, the planning commission has, I believe, a $25,000 budget set aside for consulted, for consulting. 
um, and that was discussed in terms of using that for this purpose. Just so I can go line by line with the resolution, because I just feel like that's the best way to handle this is by going into the resolution so everything is clear on paper the way we need to do it. Mm -hmm. In um, as we're going through the reason, so it'd be resolved number three, the big paragraph that we were all just working on. Um, the part about uh, receive a budget for data, we uh, we got rid of that. Right. And then it says an insights gathering and consultant planner assistant. Get rid I, of that. Didn't I don't we? think we got rid of that. We just got rid of the receive a budget for data. Oh, we like that as in insights gathering and consultant planner assistance. They, they don't have the budget for that then. Uncompensated and provide written and verbal reports. Mm -hmm. So we got rid of that whole line? Yeah. Beyond? From receiving through assistance. Correct. Mm -hmm. From receive. So now we just say be voluntary and uncompensated okay. and provide written and or verbal reports to the planning commission and city council at each monthly planning commission and city council meeting. I guess my, my point was, I thought that was a line that was basically saying we were going to use, you know, the consultant planner's assistance. City council is, this is not part of, um, my point was that that was not part of the purview of the task force to hire Okay. The plan, the hiring that's, aspect of it, but not getting information from them. Right. I think if that was just worded in a way. I am going to have enough. make that clear. Put it this way. I'm going to have enough between the three that I should think should be stricken with, where we talk about that they are in charge of policies, practices, regulatory, and all of that to where if we're not going to get there tonight, then I am fine taking the vote and being a no. Let's okay. say that. Mr. Mayor, if we, yeah, do you, you want to, well, we're to clarify something? Yeah. Uh, Let's which was the, giving preference to the citizens. What was the wording on that? Was right. So, I mean, what I have, uh, City Manager, I, is that uh, would read whereas the members of the short term rental task force should be residents, property, uh, or business owners of the city of Saugatuck with preference given to city residents. Unless there's any requested change. Okay. Y'all good with you got consensus, Mr. Mayor? I believe we do on that, on that part. On that item, yeah. So we, we, we haven't gotten everything. Um, is there still some more room to work on this, or are we getting close to reading this with the corrections and calling the question, or do we want to? try to find some I, I feel I feel Russ is fairly firm where he's at I feel you're fairly firm where you're at that's which is fine which is fine um you know we can call the question as a as a council so it's, you know it's, it's what we do so I mean is there anything else we, we could try to reach some consensus on given some of the things that have changed you know we, I think we've done some good work here uh, you know, now that we're going to have staff get that recommendation, you know, for the consultant moving quickly, so there's so there's a tool there for the, for this work group to have. Personally, I st still I know how long it's going to take for me and the chair to to interview all these people that are going to be very interested in this. Um, so I'm very I'm, I have a I have a strong bias for action tonight. I'll be honest, um, but. I want to make sure I hear everyone out in the council. And if there's a couple things that we can do that will make everybody more comfortable, I'm I'm happy to continue this dialogue. I will say that I'm happy with the changes that we've made. I think those need to be made. I think a few more need to be made. I am well aware that I am on the outside of the group and and that and what I don't want to do is keep everybody all night while I pedantically go through and tell you what I think is wrong with this because I've been clear. I've, I've said that I think that we are giving too much of that in here to the task force. I also understand that there is flexibility in here, and I know that this isn't written in stone, and I can get my head around that. I am not going to make everybody stay all night. I think that there we do need to act. I think that we do need the task force. I think that we do need to look at hiring, or not look at, we need to get the professional services, our fees, whatever we're going to do, yeah. let's get started. Okay. So I want to act, and if that means that I get a few of the things that I wanted and I still have to be a no, then I will do that. I'm fine with that. All right. Thank you, Helen. Um, 
uh, and you know, I think it's a great time to just bring council to the to, to the podium. <laughs> Just to make sure you're getting a little concerned about process. Yeah, no, which is yeah. which is why we have you here, and I thank you for being here. Uh, so, you please uh, approach the podium for the benefit of uh, benefit of the online crowd. Thank you, uh, John yeah. Brennan here for from Faye Schultz, as city yeah. attorney. Um, so we don't have currently before the board a motion with a particular resolution, and that's my concern. I, this has been more of a workshop uh, kind of feeling here, yeah. which is fine. I've got no problem with that. But uh, but I do believe that before the council takes any uh, any uh, action, that um, either the uh, the resolution that was originally uh, submitted be moved and then amended, or that there be a fresh reading of a resolution as you have worked on it, but there ought to be a reading of the entire resolution because we we do not have a writing of it at this point, which is mm -hmm. my only concern. I mean, if I was, uh, frankly, if I was, unless there was some urgency, I would say, well, give me, give us a chance to, 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 to word process a brand new resolution for you. If you don't want to do that tonight, that's fine, but there ought to be a reading paragraph by paragraph into the record of what your resolution is. Otherwise, you're going to lose. No, I agree. Right. John, I, th thank you for that. And I'm just wondering, once again, you know, it will be two weeks before the council meets again. So that leaves us, leaves us the option of trying to have a special meeting to, to accelerate this. Or I'm wondering if it's possible to have a member of staff that does not need to participate in closed session to draft this for the council to review after we leave close that would probably no we'd have to change the agenda wouldn't we <clears throat> i don't i don't or you know can we how long would it take if we recessed can we could we recess have somebody write it up I, go ahead russ what do you think yeah well i my thought is is to what the attorney said is we just read this into the record and then make the modifications or read it in and then say with these modifications essentially what you could do right I would, if you're going to do that, I would do it very carefully, and I would do it paragraph by paragraph, your whereas clauses, and exactly how you want it, mm -hmm. so that it can be then. Then I would suggest at that point there would be, you know, uh, you could be adopted verbally, but then I would also uh, recommend that it also be uh, produced in writing and and signed as a normal resolution would be signed you still you have a resolution number already right. assigned to it so you know that that would be my recommendation yeah. and, yeah. and that you could do you know nunc pro tunc at the next meeting right as long as you voted on it you have the language specifically before the council uh and everyone knows exactly what they're voting on and we have uh an accurate record of that then that can be you know documented after the meeting and put on the agenda for the next meeting to say this is this is what we we you know this is what we adopted you know in writing and 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 have it ratified if you will uh in writing that's that's what i recommend but i would not move forward without a reading open reading of every paragraph of the resolution and everyone is clear that Agreed. that's what they want I, I if, if if that is your concern about acting tonight why don't we consider um maybe having a special meeting in the next week you took the words out of my mouth. And just because I, and this is very important and there's so much interest in the community. I really don't want to get this wrong. Yeah, I don't either. And and that might give Helen a little bit more time to maybe, maybe we can find that, you know, happy medium and talk about the other points that she had at our special meeting before we draw a final draft and, and, uh, and then go forward. And like our lawyer was saying, move on to the, or counsel was saying, move on to the next meeting to approve it. No, go ahead. Oh, right. Just one concern. It, if you if you know what you want tonight and it can be put in writing, your special meeting would be rather relatively simple. You'd have it in writing, you'd read it, you know exactly what you're right. voting on. If you come to this special meeting and you're gonna have more amendments, you're back to where you are tonight. Right. Yeah. So, you know, you need to make that decision. If 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 you want to, you know, uh give direction with regard to, you know, how that resolution is gonna be redrafted with these suggestions. Then you know, and everyone is is okay with that. Then the expectation would be: it's not you can always you can always meet. No one's prohibited from moving to make amendments at any meeting. So, mm -hmm. but the understanding is the effort is to try to get it into final form for next for the next meeting. If if you're going to move in that direction, I, I respect any decision you make tonight. I just 
want to give you the advice of that if that's what you plan on doing. I, I, I think we all just want to be as transparent as possible. I think we want to know what I want. I think we want to be extremely clear on what we're voting on. And, you know, I, I having it committed to writing, I think is, is huge. Um, staff, how are you? I just, I'd like to see how the staff is feeling about having captured all this and if, if they're feeling comfortable that they've captured this and we can do this perfectly tonight. Personally and professionally, I'm with Mr. Brennan here. I mean, I would continue your, your discussion to see if there's anything else to be fleshed out and then give staff direction to produce a document, have a special meeting, and that's what you're going to be voting on. Mm -hmm. um, you can make amendments, but you know we're going to be back to making them on the fly, and that's, I think, what we're trying to avoid. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not sensing from anyone on the council a desire to drag this on or to filibuster this with, with amendments. I'm not. Um, so let me get a reaction around the table about a special meeting you know, with the understanding that, I mean, we're all go look each other in the eye and say, we're going to, we're going to, you know, look at this. And unless there's a glaring error that does not reflect tonight's conversation, we're going to vote on it. Thoughts? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I am fine with voting on it. Like I said, I will be a no, unless I can get enough people to agree to strike those three uh, paragraphs. And I don't think I will. So I'm happy to move forward in that uh, stifle the process because I did get a few things that I thought was, were needed and I'm just happy that I'm I understand that I will not be getting everything I want and that's fine I I'm willing to go with the special meeting route but my first preference would be to read into the record tonight the resolution with the proposed modifications and then having that be the resolution but not vote on it correct correct right 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 okay Steve, I want to make sure I'm respecting the planning commission and your thoughts, your reaction. I think that, you know, the changes that we were talking about are somewhat, there's not a lot of new language mm -hmm. here that I'm hearing here. You know, I, I know Russ or Ryan's been kind of making some notes you know, to be able to read it. Like, you know, we're, we're, we're taking, we're saying we're going to strike that one line. So we're taking it out and then you're adding in city council. You know, it, it could be typed up or, you, Again, if we're reading that we can always have it read because we're not really adding and amending you know a lot so in my opinion it almost could be voted on the one thing i would like to know is that you know the idea of knowing we want to keep it moving forward was when can we put out you know the applications for people to exactly. you know, apply and if, if if that can't be done until this is voted on you know then we're pushing that back you know, another week. But again, it's we want to do it right, of course, too. If all we're doing is voting, why can't we just have a special meeting tomorrow? I can do that. We need to notice it. Okay. 18. okay. 18. So then what's today is Monday. I can do it Wednesday. How about Wednesday? I mean, I what I I'm not going to do Wednesday. is off. Not at all on Wednesday? I can. I said. Oh, you can. Okay. Are you good? Everybody good on Wednesday? What time? So I have to check my calendar, but uh, you know we can make it work. Mm -hmm. Wednesday, Thursday, I could, Friday. I mean, if we could do it this week, I'm fine with it. It we've done special meetings quickly, you know, for a very directed purpose, and I don't. Uh, to me, that that makes the most sense because I, I feel like this is really we are grafting a workshop on top on top of a meeting, and it's it's. So yeah. I'm, I'm not completely comfortable. No, I get it. it. I get it. This so. is this is difficult. I get it. From a selfish standpoint, I would suggest Thursday at six, just before the Solid Tech Planning Commission, because then that way action be taken. It can be communicated to the plant, most of which are in the meeting tonight. But that way, it kind of would sync up with that. But would, would that help you stay on track, Steve? We did it right before the Planning Commission meeting. Wednesday or Thursday. That would work. I can do it. Okay. Staff, can, I want to be mindful of staff. I mean, we, we've thrown a lot at you tonight. <laughs> no. um, reaction, Ryan, see? Nope. We can certainly make these changes and have them ready for a packet relatively quickly. And um, whatever time you want to do it, staff will make it work. Uh, I'll make myself available. Lauren, yeah. Ryan, you feel good? Yeah. Jamie, you've been very patient with us. Yep. I just need a written request for the special meeting by the mayor or two of the council members. Perfect. Okay. When do you need that by? Tomorrow, okay, we can get that to you tomorrow. Just I'll I'll swing by, and council, um, are we doing this as best we can? 
given the complexity of it? Yes, I, I, I believe so. I think um, I, I wouldn't take any kind of a vote tonight okay. uh, on this. I would just, I think uh, the staff has an idea of what the council would like to see at a special meeting. And I would just adjourn or just table this particular motion and fill that until that special meeting. So we would then need a motion to table pending a special meeting. Simple as that. I, I, I would say yes. Okay, simple or as that. Postpone. Okay. I, I'm not a Roberts Rule uh, aficionado here. It's either table or postpone, but you don't you don't understand what I'm saying. Okay, I think <laughs> table. I think would work. I would make a motion to table. Um, for sure. I would make a motion that the council table resolution 230213-A short-term rental task force recommendation recommended by planning commission until Thursday for a special meeting of Sartre City Council at 6 p.m. I'll second. Motion Gardner, second Muncie. This would be a roll call vote. Clerk, please call the roll. Baldwin? Yes. Dean? Yes. Gardner? Yes. Leo? Yes. Lewis is excused, Lindsay? Yes. Stanton? Yes. Great, motion carries. And you'll have a written request tomorrow for me? I'll have a written request for you tomorrow. Yeah, I'll swing by first thing. So thank you. Thank you for your attention and your patience with that. I know it's it's not easy, but I think, you know, I think we're moving quickly and I think we're staying at pace with the, uh, with the planning commission. So with that, um, in new business, we uh, have something that I think should be a bit more routine. <laughs> 16C <laughs> resolution, resolution 230213-B-2023 poverty exemption guidelines. This will be a roll call vote. It's on page 63 of your packets. Um, anything on this, Ryan? No, we we discussed it at length. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what the motion is. I don't know where this. Do we have a cover page on this? Uh, we'll find it. We do. No, I don't see a motion. Sorry, I can't find it. Yeah, I don't see a motion on this. Well, it would just be a motion to approve. Uh, Mayor. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion, if I may. Yeah, please. Uh, to pass resolution 230213-B-2023 poverty exemption guidelines. Motion Second. Muncie's. Second Baldwin. Thank you. Yes, I'd like to make a motion to pass resolution 230215-B-2023-B-2023-B-2023-B-2023-B-2023-B-2023-B-2023-B-2023-B-2023-B-2023-B-2023-B-2023-B-2023-B-2023-B-2023-B-2023-B-2023-B-2023-B-2023-B-
where he is now when he's back in town in March. Uh, Lauren, he said he would be very happy to meet with you and, and bring you up to speed on, on all things Harbor Authority. So it was, it was a very kind offer from, from Ken. Right. So with that, I'll entertain a motion for this appointment. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to appoint Lauren Stanton to the Kalamazoo Lake Harbor Authority with the term ending February 1st, 2025. Motion, motion, Leo, do I have a second? Second. Second, Baldwin. Uh, this is a voice vote. So uh, all in favor, please say yes. Yeah, yes. Yes. Any opposed can say no. Motion carries. We are at item 16E, Planning Commission Activity Report, which is on page 69 of your packet. Uh, RC, you gonna take this one again? I think we once again talk, talked in length about this at the workshop, but go ahead. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, um, the Enabling Act requires that um, the Planning Commission provide the legislative body, so you as the city council with um, an annual report. So kind of follow the same format that's been followed in prior years. So you could kind of see the um, year over year uh, permits that have been uh, issued, um, kind of a summary of the various uh, public hearings that the Planning Commission held um, throughout the year, and then um, the, the goals and objectives that the Planning Commission set for 2023, which short-term rentals was one of them, and you just discussed that length. So unless there's any questions, it's just for information purposes at this point. Okay, so this is just for, we don't, we don't have a vote on this? No, right. okay, very good. With that, I believe we've concluded new business. Uh, we now have entered item 17, which is public comment on uh, any item, uh, doesn't have to be on the agenda. Uh, once again, please limit your comments to three minutes. Um, I will open the floor to anybody that's uh, here in the audience that wishes to address us. I, I bear you have a hand up, but you feel free to feel free to approach and uh, identify yourself. Barry Johnson, resident of Saugatuck. Uh, interesting discussion tonight. Uh, you could workshop the heck out of this thing, mm -hmm. but you know the the point is you can't vote on anything until the the uh, chair restates it. There's no way you could have restated what happened tonight. Uh, so that's workshop. Just workshop the hell out of this thing. And you think about U.S. Congress. Nothing makes it to the floor unless it gets out of committee. The workshops are a committee of the whole. So this is where you can duke it all out so that you can show up at the meeting and have something you can vote on. And you could amend it. You can change it on the fly, but uh, this process was kind of showed it wasn't ready. And I uh, really appreciate Helen's comments. And uh, I liked everybody's comments, but if you got to have a workshop every day, if you feel it's urgent to get this is done and as soon as possible, have a workshop every day, you know, that brings something to the, to the meeting that you can vote on and that the mayor can restate. Thank you. Thank you, Barry. Anyone else in the audience that wishes to address council? Seeing none, I'll open up the uh, floor to, um, to the Zoom participants. Um, the first one I see is a Damon. Damon, if you could state your full name, unmute and uh, share with us your location of residence. Yeah, I'm Damon Potter. I live in Glen, but I've been working in Saugatuck for all my life. Uh, I just wanted to say, uh, obviously, I don't live in the city. However, I commute on the roads on a quite frequent basis. And given the state of them, I just find it alarming that the 5% tax that short-term rentals pay in the city isn't being addressed in the proposal, and there's no uh, way to replace it. So I just would humbly ask the city council to consider a way to replace that in the proposal should it go forward. Thank you, Damon. Um, I've got uh, uh, Dick Waskin is next in line. Dick, please field un un unmute and just identify yourself again for the record. Waskin, 6576, Taron Ridge Road, Saugatuck, Michigan. Um, yeah, you know, I should never watch these meetings because then I know I want to comment. Um, it when I heard some of the comments today about residents versus non-residents when we we're discussing these, you know, who has what voice in the community. As a person who has been living here for over 36, 37 years, as a person who is a realtor who represents people who come here because of who we are as a um, resort community. 
it's rather offensive to hear comments that the only people that count are the people who are voting residents. There are many people here who are retirees, who are six months here, maybe six months in Florida or wherever, who may not be voters here, but are definitely stakeholders here. There are people here who have invested in this community because it's a place they want to come to with their families, with whomever, to recreate and have invested a lot of dollars and pay a lot of dollars in taxes that go to this community and to negate them and to say, well, they should not have a voice. That's wrong. Our country was founded on taxation without representation, and that's why there was a revolutionary war originally. We should not perpetuate that and just say, hey, only voters can have a voice here. Everybody who pays taxes here, everybody who has businesses here, everybody who is a part of this community, and that means Saugatuck, Saugatuck Township, that means Douglas, all should have a voice. And to hear people say only people in Saugatuck who are voters should have a voice, that is so disappointing. And if we advertise that on the airway saying, by the way, all you people who wanna come here and spend money here in our businesses and spend money here uh, recreating, um, by the way, we don't care about you. Only people who have a voting voice have something to say. So. I, I felt about this for the last 25 years. I'm voicing it tonight now. And I pray that some of the council members will actually hear this and listen to this and realize we are all, all part of the community that is Saugatuck, Douglas, and the, um, the vacation place that we've created here. Thank you. Thank you, Dick. Uh, we've got Ann Broker uh, with a hand raised. Uh, Ann, please unmute and identify yourself. Hi, my name is Ann Broker. I'm 508 Park Street in Saugatuck. Um, and I just uh, felt compelled to comment because um, I just wanted to say I was very impressed by Ms. Baldwin's comments. Um, uh, just for those of you who don't know, I am a man, member of the Planning Commission. I did vote uh, for the resolution to recommend the resolution before the City Council. My personal view, and I speak only for myself in this capacity, certainly not for the Planning Commission, but in my personal view, we should take all great ideas from everybody and incorporate them into that proposal. I don't think we should be wed to it in any way. And I thought uh, Ms. Baldwin, I was very impressed with a number of her comments. And she actually changed, if I'd gone back and, and you know, if we'd gone back in time and I'd heard her arguments, I probably would have changed my mind on a few points. Um, but I thought, especially on the makeup um, of the, committee and making sure that it's not not essentially tilted um, one way or another and really does reflect the interests of residents um, was very uh, compelling and I hope the council takes that into account. So thank you. Thank you, Ann. I have uh, Brian Elmore on the screen. Um, Brian, if you could unmute and state your name and address for the record. Sure, it's Brian Elmore, 985 Ridgeview Lane. Um, I had plenty I wanted to say, but I would just want to say that I agree with everything that Dick Waskin said. That was exactly what I was hoping to convey here um, as a part-time resident of the area, um, but not necessarily a voting resident. I just wanted to echo the comment that, you know, while the city council is sitting in the room there, you know, has a duty to, um, you know, their constituents that actually can place a vote for them. They have a greater duty to the overall community that they represent, which includes the taxpayers, the business owners, the residents, the non-residents, and even those that choose to come to our community for, you know, their holidays and spend a lot of money in our businesses and, and spend their time in our, our wonderful community. And I just want to also just, you know, throw the comment out there that we need to remember what our community might look like if we had none of the tourism that we currently have. Um, and if we really crank down on short-term rentals, where are these people going to stay? We have a Best Western and a few, you know, licensed inns. There's not exactly a large hoteling community um, in our community. And the reason we have such a thriving hospitality and tourism business is because of many of the um, variety of short-term rental options that people have available to them. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Uh, Steve, go ahead. Oh, yeah. 
Steve Mann's 568 Wyrick <laughs> Um To some of the comments, I just want to make it clear to anyone who is still listening, and I think councilors also did this at the workshop, and we did, we discussed it at length in the planning commission meetings. The formation of this task force is to put individuals together to, the, to go out and listen to the community through surveys, through public forums, and to then report back what the issues and concerns are. And it's very key that they will be listening to all business owners. Where, when it comes to the listening, the forums, the surveys, it makes no difference if you are a resident of the city, if you are a resident of the tri-communities, if you have an input, you'll be invited to come to the public forums. You'll be invited to respond to surveys. The, the individuals who are on the task force, along with the consultant firm that we would, would be looking to hire, will then summarize that for the planning commission as well as the city council. This task force will not be making you know, actual policies. And some of the things we kind of get into, we understand the importance of you know, how it's gonna reflect on the entire community. and us in the community moving forward, one of the things that the task the planning commission will be doing over the next two to three years is working on the updated master plan for the tri communities, at least for the city of Sagatep. And this falls right into that. So for anybody who's out there who's not thinking that we have that when we're talking about whether it's residents or just business owners or property owners, it really is about who's on the task force, but they will be listening to all parts. And I just want to make sure that was clear tonight. Thank you for that. I don't see anybody else on the Zoom call with a hand raised. I don't see anybody unmuting. Um, yeah, oh, in the... oh, oh, please come forward. Please state your name again and read, address for the record. Hi, I'm uh, Holly Anderson, 567 Wyrick. Um, Want to thank the council both at the workshop and tonight, such great discussion and engagement. And that's awesome because this is such an important topic. Um, Want to uh, again, thank Helen for her great thought and work. I come from background um, in corporate communications. One thing we often did when there were different points of view, and I don't know if this is possible for what you consider at your special meeting, but if there are a few topics that, you know, there's still a lot of passion in presenting an, a, you know, a different point of view, maybe there is a way to get into the packet for council alternate, you know, maybe two alternate paragraphs. Um, so that way, I, I feel like we had 97% of the discussion, but not that last 3%. So I throw that out as an idea. Um, but the, the engagement and, um, you know, on the plan, I'm a member of the planning commission too, with the planning commission has just been awesome. And it, which I love us serving our stakeholders with this kind of debate and thought. So thank you. Thank, thank you for that, Holly. Thank you, Holly. Um, I don't see any other individuals either on the Zoom or in the room wishing to comment. So uh, with that, I am going to close public comment. So that takes us to uh, item 18, closed session, um, 18A, pursuant uh, to MCL 15.268, section E, to consult with the city attorney regarding special counsel to assist on trial strategy in connection with specific pending litigation involving Dude Ridge SALP versus City of Saugatuck, case number 21-64707, and pending litigation involving Gary E. Medler versus City of Saugatuck, case number 23-66752. Um, I would entertain a motion. I have a motion from Gardner. Do I have a second? Second, uh, second Stanton. Uh, Mayor, before we, there was a, I think there was a error in the quote. It should be six four seven zero nine. I heard something different. I heard seven also. Yep. It, six four. I have six four seven zero nine. Yep. You said seven, so it should be six four seven zero nine. Did right? you just oh. combine those two? We no. Two separate things. I, I I did, and we have a motion from council. Um, and I can I can read this. Uh, can you? Um, you yes. Have two separate motions when it um, suits your mm -hmm. yeah. signature for this one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I will start with. Um, I'm sorry. We I had a motion by Gardner and a second by. Who was my okay, second? Let's just start over again. Okay. Uh, 
um, the first motion 18A on the, your paper that I gave you here. Okay. Um, first. And okay. We'll okay. Th okay. Thanks for that, Jamie. So 18A. Pursuant to MCL 15.268E to consult with the city attorney regarding special counsel to assist on trial strategy. Yep, he's doing it. In connection with specific pending litigation involving Dune Ridge SA LP versus City of Sarta, case number 21. I want you to read this one. Oh. You don't have that paper. So this motion, please. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Motion by. Gardner, yes. just, just yep. a motion to enter into closed session pursuant to MCL 15.268H to consult with the city attorney regarding the litigation pending in the Allegan County Circuit Court in Dune Ridge SALP at L versus City of Saugatuck, case number 21 64709 CA. Thank you. So uh, motion second. By, motion, we have a motion by Gardner, a second by Stanton. Um, and, and we need a oh, roll call. and we need a roll call vote. Yep. Ready, Baldwin. Yes. Dean. Yes. Gardner. Yes. Leo. Yes. Lewis is excused. Muncie. Yes. Stan. Yes. Okay. I have so a second motion. We have a second motion. Um, who wants to do the honors I'll on this one? Make a second motion. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's different than what we have. This is your second motion. Right. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Make a motion to enter into closed session pursuant to MCL 15.268H to consult with the city attorney regarding the litig litigation pending to in the Allegan County Circuit Court in Medler versus City of Saugata, case number 12-66752-AA. Second. So motion by Muncie, second by Stanton. Uh, we have a roll call for this. Baldwin. Yes. Dean? Yes. Gardner? Yes. Leo? Yes. Who is excused? Muncie? Yes. Stanton? Yes. Okay, great. So, Thank you, Jamie. Motion carries. Uh, the council will enter a closed session. Um, uh, council has informed me that Council Member Lewis can attend closed session via Zoom, although she cannot um, vote or. Right. And also, Okay. So, Jamie, do you have the ability to? Uh, I'm just going to need a couple minutes. I'm going to put everyone in the waiting room that's set for Council Member Lewis and Mr. Kennedy. Very good. We need a. Okay. All right. So we've returned to open session yep. per OMA. Um, that takes us to item 19 on the agenda uh, to take any <clears throat> necessary action as a result of closed session discussions. And this will be a roll call. Yeah. Motion to take legal counsel's recommendation regarding the litigation pending in the Allegan County Circuit Court in Medler versus City of Saugatuck, case number 12-66752-AA. Motion Stanton. Do I have a second? Second. Second Baldwin. So uh, this will be a roll call vote. Baldwin. Yes. Dean. Yes. Gardner. Yes. Leo. Yes. Lewis is excused. Muncie. Yes. Stanton. Yes. Great. Uh, Item 20, correspondence. We have an, a letter from Catherine Simon, noted. Uh, city Council comments. I'll go around the horn real quick. I'll start with Helen. Uh, oh, I want to thank Council for uh, listening to my objections to the um, direct resolution and to uh, being heard, even if I don't get everything I always want. Um, that's democracy, and I'm happy to participate. 
Very interesting. I want to thank Steve Mann for coming and and the um, and the Planning Commission uh, coming. Uh, they they uh, valued a lot of input. I was really happy with the meeting. I think doing kind of the workshop that we kind of got into kind of showed a little bit of the process to folks that are still on or were on earlier. And I I did appreciate that conversation. I appreciate all your input as well. You spent a lot of time with that, um, Helen Baldwin. Also tomorrow's Valentine's Day, and also this weekend is a gallery stroll in downtown Saugatuck and Douglas. So visit all your art galleries and see all of the uh, demonstrations and meet and greets with all the artists at all the galleries in Saugatuck and Douglas. Holly? Um, I just want to say for the record that I have been on every side of the rental issue. I have had Airbnbs. <laughs> I've had long-term rentals. I have stayed in long-term rental. I have been a homeowner. I have um, you know, been uh, a frustrated semi-local who didn't have a vote. So I do understand um, that, you know, we need to uh, be very mindful of how interconnected our community is and how much we rely on each other. And there are a lot of different interests, but I thought that our process, even though it was not pretty and it was long. It 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 is it was thoughtful. So thank you to Helen and um, to the members that of the community. That yeah, struggled. well said, Holly. Well said, Holly. Uh, just the same. Um, all stakeholders will be able to voice their concerns. Period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it. Thank you. Um, on that topic again, I appreciate the back and forth with everybody and the perspectives. It's it's this is the way stuff gets done in a in an appropriate manner, in uh, my opinion. I do want to call and to call to attention correspondence we received today from Kathy Brockington. You may or may not know Kathy. She is uh, Peggy Boyce's daughter. Mm -hmm. um, I've known Kathy and her husband Joe for uh, as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. And for someone like Kathy to actually, and she's been a long time, she actually served um, here as an election official for a number of years too. For Kathy to write a letter like this and a letter to the editor shows you how crucial this issue is to our community. I respect Kathy immensely because of her time here and her family. And I think it's important. That's the reason why I trust the people that can be working in this process, that they're going to be in touch with people like Kathy. I will make sure Kathy's engaged too. But she's just one of many people in this community that maybe don't necessarily come to meetings or speak up often, that these are the people that I really listen to when they speak because they really have a perspective that I think is important. Also remember, Monday, March 6th, we are, we're working together to have a police and community meeting um, at the Sagatuck High School at 6 p.m. And um, I'm gonna be getting some information to Jamie to put that, do some social media. So looking forward to that. Thanks, and just once again, uh, thank you to each and every one of you, staff included. Um, you know, this this is what good government should be. I'm, I'm exceedingly proud in each and every one of us, you know, for being able to sit down at the table and hash out really difficult issues and, and be respectful to each other, be polite to each other and, and listen. Everyone around this table listened. And, you know, you all do this as volunteers. There's only one person here getting paid by the hour and, and you're valued. Thank you for being here. <laughs> <laughs> no, we appreciate you too. But once again, I am just so proud to be part of this team and, and just thank you all. And, and with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second, Leo. Motion Stanton, second, Leo. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Yeah.